Gaming Division. Salutations! I am Cameron Ryan. Welcome to Gaming Division. Uh, this is going to be an unboxing video for... Where's that? Dominion Adventures! It's the gray box. Um, they have not... Oh, I take it back. It's the dark gray box. The uh, Intrigue is also gray. Uh, and the newer one that's coming out is going to be gold or yellow. Uh, it will not be orange like Cornucopia. So let's go and get this open. Ah, there we go. He said the plastic from her cardboard. Box sound. Oh, oh. Ha. Oh. So this is super curious. The first thing that you see when you open this is that. And it's box down. And I'm definitely curious. Um, because that is not normally a Dominion thing that like you'd have this colored thing there. Um, real quick. So I get out of the way. This is the rule book. You'll notice it's much thicker than you would normally do, but it's filled with information. They usually have very detailed rules on preparation and uh, optional rules, uh, and then they explain everything, and they've got a big card list. Um, they used to, I wonder if it's still the case, have a detailed card list in the back where they went card by card and explained them. Um... They may have grouped them this time. Nope. It's just laid out very oddly. Um, if you look here, you'll see what I mean. There's the cards to the side and the text, but there's no border to separate the two uh, to group the card with the text. It's just, no, you'll figure it out. And that's fine, because well, let's be honest, you will. Um, let's do that. So let's go ahead and see what this is. It's so pretty. Oh, I think I remember this. Uh, a buddy of mine had bought this a while back, and I'm just slowing the uptake, apparently. Okay, so we've got four big card packs. And I'm not going to juggle these. So let's do that for the moment. Some cool advertisement for Spellbox. Um, okay, and you've got the cool little strip. I actually really like that they do this. Um, I just got. I don't like the, how they orient it because uh, it's up and down or it's sideways. I like it this way. Oh, I will applaud this insert. This is a new and different insert, uh, as far as my memory will hold. Um, and I just swapped a bunch of these around. Um, on a second look, it actually looks like a better quality plastic. Um, I don't know how they did the spacing, but but now it's right side up with the, the, the card list right side up, and the cards will sit there like that. Um, that way instead of that way. And, I, I mean, theoretically that could be bad for the cards over an extended period of time, but it'll be all right. Ugh. So put that back together. None of that's going back in the box. For the record, uh, I white box my Dominion. So I currently have four of these uh, in which my Dominion game resides. Um, it's just how I do things. I'm not saying you have to, uh, but it, uh, to me it helps. And I, I have all my cards organized with little dividers and labels. And I shouldn't pick that up. <laughs> All right, um, the thing that I'm immediately happy about with this set is that on three of the four packs, we see the orange cards, and uh, that means that we have duration abilities, and that was probably my favorite set with Seaside, where we had things to go in there, because it helped keep your deck thin, um, but it helped and helped you keep advantage with uh, the amount of abilities you were playing, and potentially resources gained. Um... This is interesting, though. On the fourth deck, 
Distant lands, action reserve victory. And I don't know what reserve means. So I'll have to go consult the rulebook about that, but it is an action and a victory card. Um, it's green, so victory. Victory cards are green. Maybe it's been a while since I played. Um, we've got the port, plus one card, plus two actions. Um, a money card, coin of the realm, one money. Whenever you play this, uh, put it on your tavern mat. Okay, so the tavern mat is part of what we're seeing out here. Um, and they have six colors for six different people, and then they have six uh, colors available for the things as well. It's curious how they laid that out, but if, but this does look like the most efficient way to do it. Um, and it doesn't really matter what where you put the uh, the cards or the the colors because you're going to use the same amount of colors no matter what, just for organizational purposes. All right, and this is the, the part that I don't like about this set is that you have the evolution cards. So you have from page to peasant, um, and then I'm sure... Okay, peasant goes to soldier. Um, that's weird that that was there. Um, there's a caravan guard in the middle of the rat catchers. So I'm going to have to count these and make sure that I have the right number of cards. Um, so let's see, race plus one action, lots of text, jeez. Uh, trash this or a card from your hand. Look at a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to the cost in coin from the trash card. Put one in your hand and discard the rest. And when I said coin, I meant money. Um, it's something I, I feel like I have to distinguish because especially in guilds, there's an actual coin uh, and not that represents money but isn't money. Um, so some some coins <laughs> coins are money, but not all monies are coins. Um, Ratch catcher plus one card plus one action. Put this. Uh, on your tavern mat, at the start of your turn, you may call this to trash a card from your hand. So, I'm thinking that reserve means that you can put it to your tavern mat. And then you can call it back uh, to do something. And that sounds right. Um, we've got this amulet uh, duration card. Now choose now and at the start of your next turn, choose one plus one money or trash card from your hand or gain a silver. That is a pretty handy uh, card. I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, I love cards that let me trash and thin out my deck. Um, the fact that it's a money uh, all on its own or that you can gain a silver is big to me. So caravan guard plus one action plus one card at the start of your next turn plus one money. Uh, Again, I like duration cards. Uh, the reaction side of it is, when another player plays an attack card, you may play this from your hand. Plus one action has no effect if it's not your turn. So, I really don't know what that does for you. You could get another card during someone else's turn. Now, it's a free card because you don't waste the action. So, maybe I, I was a little glib there. Uh, dungeon, plus one action. Now, and at the start of your next turn, plus two cards and discard two cards. Um, if you have a milling strategy instead of a thinning strategy, that is your, your card right there. A goose. Um, hireling at the start of each of your turns for the rest of the game, plus one card. This stays in play. Now, this is something jeez. Oh, now, this is something that I definitely did not expect Dominion to ever do. Permanent cards. Um, permanent global effects, uh, or not global effects, but permanent effects. Uh, very curious about that, that it's, it just stays in play. The thing that irritates me about it, though, is that they colored it and named it the same as the other duration cards. Um, they should have come up with a new border, and I don't know what color they would have picked. Um, or maybe done a pattern even and just said this is permanent and called it a permanent card and not a duration card or permanent duration uh, if they wanted uh, cards that affect duration cards to still be there. Um, so, okay, so we've got page to peasant, peasant to soldier, and then soldier to fugitive. What in the world is happening? And then from Fugitive to Disciple, and then Disciple to Teacher? I don't think I'm doing this right. 
but you've got a you've got a level two. Oh, oh sorry, two level twos, a three, a four, a five, and then the teacher is a six. Um, seems like a very long route. Uh, treasure hunter will go to a warrior, which I'm always confused with the difference between soldiers and warriors. I guess warriors don't fight for a certain cause; soldiers are bound to something. Um, so warriors to heroes, um, heroes for a champion, uh, this stays in play. So another permanent card, and this one's a hero, plus one action for the rest of the game. When another player plays an attack, it doesn't affect you. <laughs> when you play an action, plus one action. So you always have one action. Um, I know, I've seen decks where, like, that would have been brutal. To deal with. Um, and this is cute. Bunch of blank cards. Uh, I've, I don't remember seeing that in a while. Maybe I took all mine and hit them. Um, I'm just going to drop those there. Uh, this is interesting. That we've got sideways cards now. I forgot about these entirely. So we'll come back to those. Uh, okay, of course we have our blue borders for all the different cards. Um, set those aside. I forgot how many different cards they release. And that the thickness of that rule book really should have tipped me off. Um, bridge troll. Uh, each other player takes his minus one token. Now and at the start of your next turn, plus one buy. While this is in play, cards cost one less on your turns, but not less than zero. So action attack duration. Um, very interesting. Giant card. I'm not going to read all these. Uh, I think that was a mistake to start doing it. Um, Haunted Woods, Lost City, uh, Relic, it's a money, a treasure card, um, Royal Carriage is a, another reserve card, sorry, the coloration on the reserve cards throws me because I'm like, what is that? Um, Storyteller, Swamp Hag, Treasure Trove, which is another treasure card, Wine Merchant, which is a reserve card, which is why it's that weird color. Um, Hireling, I think I mentioned them earlier. Yep. Um, so I'm going to go through this last stack here real quick, and then I'll talk to you about the, the things that I'm going to have to move all those cards for. Um, dungeon gear, oh, like equipment, not like a cog. Um, guide card, which is a reserve. Um, I don't like the reserve mechanic. It gets a lot of stuff done quickly, but then you're stuck with stuff on your mat that you can't get at. But at least it's not in your deck. Uh, the problem is is that it you use it for what you want to use it for, and then it sticks on your mat, and then it goes to your, your discard pile. So it lengthens the duration in which it is not available for you to play. Um, so if you had a lot of reserve cards, then you would actually be very slow. You could actually end up with nothing in your hand at one point. Um, challenge accepted. I need to play and try to make that happen where I can't do it. Uh, you got a magpie, messenger, miser. <laughs> um, sorry, it's a funny looking picture. It looks like a grumpy guy sitting outside his tent. Uh, ranger. Um, turn your journey token over. Transmogrify. I like that word. Artificer, which I'm not sure about. Um, and British Troll. So, last thing I want to... Oh, I'm sorry. i got two things I want to cover still. So we have the sideways cards, the event cards. My understanding is that you play, like, one of these, and it stays out as a global event. Once per turn, if you have no treasures in play, gain a card costing up to four. Um, now, the events have a cost to themselves, so I think you have to buy them to get them in play... And then uh, everyone has access to it, essentially. So let me move some of this off of here. And we'll take a quick look at these tokens. And we'll hit the rule book. All right. So. Okay, so. Plus one card, plus one action, plus one buy, plus one money. Minus two to cost. Uh, a boot, a gravestone, and a landscape, like a cottage or something. 
Uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I do not remember what those mean. Um, when you withdraw a card, instead lose this. So these are statuses that are on you. A minus one money, when you uh, get money, get one less and lose this. So... Okay, so this one... Okay, so these are one-time effects. Um, I think you could probably manage these without this sort of thing, but uh, I think it's a helpful option to have these sort of things around. Um, so real quick, I'm going to consult the rule book, and then we'll uh, figure out what the, the exactitude of it is. This is a lot of weird technical rule stuff. I'm really glad this book is so detailed. I wish it was laid out a little bit better, but... They did a lot with a very little, so uh, I, I can't really fault them there. Um, most of these are things that you put on supply piles, uh, these larger ones being ones that you put on yourself or the deck. Um, uh, the journey token is, uh, they, they all have things to do with specific cards, and the cards will tell you, the descriptions on the cards will tell you what to do with them. Just make sure that these are available, uh, and that you have access to them, and uh, you'll be able to figure it out based on the cards. <laughs> I'll be honest, it's not even worth me explaining this one video. Um, or maybe I could do a separate video just on that if there was a lot of questions, but again, it's in your rule book. Um, it's not really tantalizing. Uh, the interesting thing, it more, or the more interesting aspects are the upgrade cards, what they call traveler cards, where the things can evolve from peasant to, to soldier to deserter, etc., etc., up the ranks. Um, and then the event cards. The event cards are meant to go in your randomizer deck, but they don't have blue backs. They have black backs, just like your normal cards, but they're never supposed to be in with your normal cards. So I think that's quite the oversight. These should probably be black-backed. Um, and I would be perfectly happy to just mix these in with the blue cards anyways. Uh, the idea being that you, when you pull them, uh, you just add them out to the thing. They do not replace supply piles. Um, they're not kingdom cards. They just are additional cards that everybody has access to. Some of them have limitations that you can only do one or two per uh, turn or whatever, but hey, that's what it is. Um, so this has a lot of things I like, a lot of things I dislike. I think it adds a lot of uh, technical aspects. So this, is, this is probably more of a game for people that are very familiar with Dominion, and I would warn you against it if you're not. If you're looking for new uh, experiences and you're considering Dominion, get the base set. Uh, totally worth it. Um, Seaside is a particular favorite of mine once you start adding things on. Um, I believe, is it Prosperity or Intrigue? I will check for you. Uh, not Prosperity. So Intrigue should be the other standalone expansion. Yeah. So if you buy Intrigue or Dominion, you can get a base starter set, and they're both worth it. Um, and then uh, you can add this to that. And again, there are a lot of different expansions. Um, yeah, so there are lots of different ways to play this game. Uh, feel free to look it up, do your research. Uh, this has just been an unboxing for Dominion Adventures. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Until uh, you see me next time, I am Camerai, and that's game over. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go to click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.